It is the Woody Show, and uh, please welcome to the studio. We actually have a guest. Mm-hmm. So excited! Mm-hmm. It's Dan Aykroyd. Oh everybody, Dan Aykroyd yeah. is here. Hi, Dan. Mr. Aykroyd. Uh, no, o- o- only the police call me Mr. Aykroyd, <laughs> and they're not uh, not always. Uh, good, to, good to see you. It's a little, yeah, what a, what a nice too. crew. Yeah, we what never a beautiful office here. What a desk. Right, yeah. Yeah. isn't it nice? <laughs> yeah, it looks yeah, like a liquor yeah. store, and it's super clean. Mm-hmm. Only the best around here, Dan. Yeah, yeah. right. Oh, yeah, nice. no, I mean, the mountains. We uh, and... we never get uh, living legends in here. But, oh uh, well, mm. no. Fortunate working no. actor for many years. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, don't I was know about legends. But, I was uh, thinking about it. You know, you coming in, and you know, I'm such a big fan mm. of uh, so much of your work. Mm. But I mean, what a what a life you have lived. I mean, all the way back with like, Saturday Night Live and all the movies and everything else that you've uh, that you've done. Not just like uh, as an actor, but like, as a screenwriter. Like the first screenplay that you wrote was um, uh, Blues Brothers. Like, I, I, you know, uh, the band Bush. Yeah, sure. Gavin mm-hmm. Rossdale. The first song he wrote was one of their biggest hits, "Come Down." You know, the first screenplay you write is uh, "Blues Brothers." Like, did that make you nervous? Like that that thing is such a big hit, and then uh, you know, where do, where do you go from there? Can you can you well, do it again? Well, you know, every every actor, every creator, when they're finished a project, uh, you know, looks into the abyss and figures out what's next. I suppose uh, I've just been very fortunate. All of the projects that that you've liked, and and some that you may mm-hmm. not have. Uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, result of, of, uh, really, uh, heartfelt collaborations. And as I, you know, we don't do it alone. I right. really am proud of a lot of films I made, AAA projects. I'm proud of SNL. I'm proud of the records that John and I did and the band right. we put together. Um, but that, that's, uh, that's all with other genius, wonderful people, actors, writers. And so it's a collaborative effort. And I, I'm just grateful that I was able to work with the best in every yeah. discipline and skill. Yeah. Yeah. Songwriting, dancing, choreography, stunt driving, uh, you know, uh, all the skills you've but, got I mean, all the people a, a that film you were, crew. You mean that, I mean, in the movies, I mean, whether it was uh, Belushi or John Candy, Steve yeah. Martin. like Eddie all Murphy. Pe- Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Robert Redford, for yeah. God's sake. I, yeah. You know, so I've been so fortunate and, uh, and had... Uh, you know, I had fun doing 97% of it. <laughs> uh, Dan, yeah. I read a book, uh, you might have heard of this, called Wild and Crazy Guys, and it was about a lot of, like, the 80s and 90s comedy. And they, I believe they said that you were kind of more the, like, the avant-garde and weirdo creative force. <laughs> like you're saying, you had other guys who were kind of the, okay, let's rein this in a little bit. But you were more of, like, the, let's, let's kind of push the envelope and that sort of thing. Well, I always thought if it made me chuckle and, and I tell it to <laughs> someone else and then someone else, oh, that's funny. And then right, you right. go yeah, to five yeah. people and five Five turns to fifty, and five hundred and five thousand and five million in terms of the movie. Some you have to just trust your own instincts. What makes you yeah. entertain? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But God knows, uh, you know, I had great uh, people uh, in the cast and cr- crew uh, of Saturday Night Live there that I got to work with. And then what? What came later with SNL? Look at look at the work. I know. Me. Yeah. Jeez, I mean, uh, John Lovitz alone. I mean, they're <laughs> worth the price. <laughs> worth the price of admission. <laughs> oh. You hear different stories about what it's like to actually work. On SNL, like working at SNL now sounds like a combo of like hell and frat life. Like there's these two sides of it. Like one's just this big party, and then the other side you hear about it's like, man, there's this infighting and there's this drama and there's things going on. But when you were there, it sounds like it was more the the frat life stuff, the high jinks, the partying. Like weren't you sleeping there at uh, at NBC for yes. a while? Yes, mm-hmm. I got a I got them to put in bunk beds and, and uh, <laughs> oh, wow. a shower. Oh, yeah. We used to write the we write write the show, you know, start writing the show Tuesday night, Wednesday night you'd stay over Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh it it was it's very stressful still. It's video commando, you know. Uh it's very uh very high energy and uh and high focus and so uh you know, it, it helps to have allies there. Yeah. Uh, Cuz sometimes there's there were there were forces working against yeah, uh you know within mm-hmm. and, and and that but but ultimately, uh, in the end, each show came out to uh, to where uh, it was uh, either a jam or a turkey. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and but we got it done. You know, right. it came out. It was completed, and uh, everyone was a pro in the end. Yeah. Uh, of every show, uh, at the end of every show, we did, and then we went back and did it all again. But uh, I think the show has great currency and relevancy now. I I do watch when I can stay up. Uh, but I, I do... live. I have. I have a very cool. Very <laughs> quiet life right <laughs> I live in a very slow community. Would you like regular gasoline? Yeah, where are yes. you living these days? Well, where are you spending your time? Uh, between yeah. between Mar- Martha's Vineyard uh, a little oh. bit 
uh, mm-hmm. and then Eastern Ontario, Canada, and okay. then the road. Right. Uh, you know, with the with the product here, the yep. the vodka, yeah. the which uh, we are going to talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Don't CBS, worry about CBS has a special. I went out and bought it. Dan. No, that's, but the, that's like the, the special there's bottle. There's like four, there's the that. clear, then there's this like yeah. iridescent, then mm-hmm. there's a black, and then there's a pride uh, bottle as well, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I had to ask specifically because they're always Dan. We were talking about this off the air. The crystal head vodka is always behind lock and key, at least here oh, in the yes. states. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it is extra fancy, and people want they, people, yeah, they want because people want the skull. Yeah, right. I know. I know. That's we're fighting that yeah. because. <laughs> In Canada, there we just tell uh, the government liquor store we'll replace it, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and then and then we get a bill for them for the full retail price. No, oh, wow. it's very popular. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, no, I've got a lovely, quiet life right now. Everything's good there, but the product uh, that you have in your hand is mm. uh, is uh, our wheat, sunset wheat, mm. and the notes on that are peppercorn, anise, Ooh, that makes yeah. a great Bloody Mary. Uh, and the bottle is beautiful, uh, designed by my friend John Alexander. It's awesome. And and there, I I just you know I got got into this because uh, I tasted other uh, I, I don't name names or other brands, but a lot of vodkas out there I tasted them. They they smelt like nothing, or they tasted like nothing, and they or they smelt like Chanel Number no. Five. True. Right? Yeah. And True. I thought uh, you know wait uh, how can we change that? So we have a corn. A vodka in the clear. Uh, that's uh, peaches and cream corn from Ontario. So, like, what Canada. causes that? Like, what did you leave out of this that, uh, well, that I'll causes tell you. stuff? I'll tell you. I don't, you know, I know we're the first people to do it. I don't know if anybody is doing it now, but we certainly changed uh, the fluid in our bottle. Uh, what happens is uh, that a lot of these manufacturers, uh, they are afraid uh, that the consumer is going to open the bottle and it's going to smell like ethyl alcohol. Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, wait, wait a minute. Hold it. We're, we're, we're drinking beverage alcohol, and if you do ethyl alcohol right, like we do from the wheat mash, the corn mash, we make the black is the agave. We make mm-hmm. a mash of what they make tequila out of, the blue ever right. agave. We do a vodka distillation on that. And you open our bottles, and it's that sweet kind of smell of alcohol. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you open other bottles, smells like nothing, tastes like nothing, mm. smells like perfume, because they add the following things. <laughs> they add glyceride. It's a cousin to what antifreeze. Cousin antifreeze. Oh, good. Oh, God. oh, great. Now, they, they do it to put, produce a viscosity there. Now, they don't put enough to hurt you sure, in sure. these products. Okay. Uh, and then they add lemonine. And you've seen those commercials where they take citrus oil in a mustard jar and they cut through the grease? Yeah. That's citrus oil. They add that uh, to produce, uh, to mask the, the smell and scent of the alcohol. Uh, and then they put sugar in there. Yeah, somebody was telling me, because wow. I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, tequila guy. I like yeah. tequilas. And someone's like, what are you drinking? Like, this is like... I didn't realize there, I mean, really was, a, I mean, there was, there's a difference in tequilas, like some are smoother to me, some other whatever. I didn't realize there was much in that, you know? And then um, somebody oh. told me and gave me uh, some of their, uh, their favorites of the, the stuff that doesn't have all the additives, I guess. And, right. And, and, and you can definitely tell the difference. I don't know about the tequila business, whether additives are put in there, but they certainly were in, yeah, they in are. a lot of, uh, are they yeah. really? The fu- yeah. then they're called fusel oils and fusel is the German word for bad liquor. <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. So, Fusa, you know, so, yeah. so there you go. No lemony, yeah. no sugar, zero additive. We won uh, medals all around the world. Yeah. And so Award my, winning. my life he does, is. He, he wins with. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you. The, such the a ba- winner. I, I, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't win a thing in high school. Oh, hey, we college. don't win anything around here either. No, no. I, I, I won <laughs> yeah. an I won an exit ticket to both institutions. Uh, it's called uh, Crystal <laughs> but, Head Vodka, yeah. and uh, it's available now at your local liquor store. You can't miss it. It's in the uh, Skull bottle, right? And uh, Crystal Head is releasing some ready to drink cocktails and a whole bunch of other Ooh. stuff too at Crystal Head Vodka there or CrystalHeadVodka.com. We got Dan Aykroyd here in studio. Yes. 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 Uh, like we were just it. talking about his uh, vodka product, Crystal Head Vodka, before the break. We were also talking a little bit about uh, SNL, and I, had, I did have a couple more uh, questions. I'm, do you get bored talking about some of this, uh, the older stuff like That's the a SNL? Good question. And, uh, I do not. Because you have, I, I mean, not. but you have such a storied career. It's like, and people get this opportunity. Like, I'm sure people who are close to you, they're like, oh God, mm-hmm. Dan's yeah. talking about SNL again. Right. right. But right. like, when, you know, or Blues Brothers. Right? I have, I have other questions. Yeah. About other movies, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you you had mentioned you know having somebody who is a, an ally at mm-hmm. SNL, and you, we've heard and I, I I've heard so many stories uh, over the years about Chevy Chase, but I know that like, he was one of your champions. He was when you were on mm-hmm. SNL, and you had a completely different experience. So what's what? Is it just that some people get rubbed the wrong way by the guy, or did something change? What is this? What is, I mean, what was so special about you that you had this? Um, well. You know, uh, experience with him that I, I don't know. You know, we, I, I, I loved what he did and he loved what I did. And, and yeah. I, I don't know. We came from kind of completely different worlds. 
Because he's mm-hmm. one of those guys I want. He's one of those people that you see and you're such a fan. You're like, you want him to be awesome. And then you hear these stories and it's disappointing. Well, I think he's a little waspy. You know, like, <laughs> white, white, yeah. Yeah. you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, that <laughs> East Coast, you know, uh, kind of yeah. preppy, you know. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, and if, if, if you look like anything close to like uh, an, um, a, an idiot in front of him, he's not going to put, put put up with that. Yeah. You know, because he, 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 he likes smart, intelligent, uh-huh. accomplished people. And uh, yeah, we better, and, and, we better and, and never meet him. And yeah. was damaged. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, his mother used to lock him in the closet when she goes shopping, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So you know who stands before you. Also, he beat a heroin addiction yeah. and a painkiller addiction. So he's been through a lot and fought a lot. But uh, he is just to hang with him. He's just so funny and uh, so uh, sometimes That's the stuff I want he can be believe, caustic you know? and abrasive yeah. and that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which I would also accept. But yeah. he's really he's got yeah. a beautiful heart. He's yeah. he's really a sweet guy and uh, very sentimental. He's a sp- spectacular jazz pianist. Really? Yeah. And he's just a, a good hang. Now you got to remember that. Cocaine was quite popular back then, <laughs> and that can be a, a, that can be a for, for for all of us. And I, 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 it was never my thing. I never really liked right. it, uh, but I did. I did do it a couple mm-hmm. of times. There, You're more like a drinker, uh, weed smoker. Uh, I would say uh, more, you know, uh, wh- white wine, and and you know, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. some of the greenie now and again. But yeah. but I tell you, the, the the coke would change moods, and it would change, it, it made people edgy. It's the worst, and, yeah. You know, uh, you you might think you were having fun on it, but uh, so. Mm. I think there were some interactions that Chevy might have had when he had, was on that, as I yeah. as, as with John, and so it's just the currency of our time back then. Yeah, unfortunately, you uh, directed him in a 1991 movie that I absolutely love called um, "Nothing But Trouble." It was Thank it easy? You. Was it easy to do that? Oh, Chevy, so direct, <laughs> direct him in 1991. Well, of and course he, and he was in Spies Like Us too. You know, yeah, right? and I love that movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, he was, I know. and he was really good in yeah. both of them. Yeah. And of course, drove me crazy the whole time. And uh, yeah, uh-huh. uh, you know, but uh, but be, be, because he he loved what he was doing there, and he liked the scripts, and he liked the characters. You know, he came through for me. Nothing yeah. but trouble was a was, was, is a fun, very serviceable comedy. Uh, yeah. it, uh, was not a hit at the time because we were doomed uh, mm. on the weekend that it opened, and I'll tell you how. <laughs> <laughs> Here I make this movie for yeah. us, for the guys, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, right, or you know that audience mm-hmm. uh, that likes absurdist kind of out there humor, and, yeah. And so two pictures open in the marketplace yeah. against us that weekend. One was Silence of the Lambs with Jodie oh, Foster. Yeah. That's yeah. where Julie I Foster. was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Oscar winning. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And, and then uh, Julia Roberts sleeping with the enemy. You can be sure. Oh, every wow. woman in America told their husbands or girl or boyfriends or, you know, uh-huh. we're going to see those two movies. We're right. not going to see the actor. So it uh, it didn't work in, in the marketplace, but in retrospect, l- younger yeah. people like yourself, you're oh, like 22, uh, right? A <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, sure. lot of kids love that that, that film. Yeah. Oh, and that's I, the, f- I, the first time we saw Tupac in a movie. Yeah, uh, Digital, Underground Digital Underground was, was in the movie. I know, yeah. 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 Also, yeah. I did have one other question about the movie because in the the same year there was a movie called Doc Hollywood with uh, Michael J. Fox, and uh-huh. they kind of had like similar plot points. Did that annoy you? I got Hollywood a I'm, little bit because it was like about people from a big city that get pulled over in a small town. Oh, I don't know. And that a thing. haunted yeah, house I, with I a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yours was, yours was much funner. But yeah, I, I've got. I, I remember go Doc Hollywood it. vaguely. Vaguely, yeah. I remember. Yeah, no. he didn't know about it, but now no, it annoys I, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that he knows about it. Way to go, man. Uh, well, that was nice parallel, work. parallel thinking. Was Doc Hollywood yeah. running from the law? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But he gets pulled over in a small town, yeah. and then he has to but do a bunch of stuff. But just your basic plot points ripped off. Those those places exist in America. Yeah, absolutely. That New Jersey. Pennsylvania Triangle, where Vulcanvania County uh, was, as uh, in the in the story, uh, is is a real that real. You, you see, you really do see places like that. Yeah, yeah. Dan Aykroyd is here, and uh, yeah, speaking of um, uh, difficult personalities but good mm-hmm. people, Bill Murray, um, and you were talking about like working with uh, Chevy Chase in in these other movies. I think one of my favorite stories, and you'll tell it way better than I do, is when you were making Ghostbusters. Obviously, the role was written for Belushi. And, you know, mm. he didn't uh, live to be able yeah. to be in that movie. And so you cast uh, Bill Murray. and every- Not exactly in the same role. Like, I, I uh, not exactly in the same. Like Once Billy Venkman. came on, we rewrote it. But right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, but, like, yeah. um, anyway, fixed, so. but fixed, We fixed Venkman for him. Everybody was really nervous because it's the first day of shooting. And they're wondering if he's even going to show up. Because it was, like, the negotiation or something behind the scenes. Like I said, you'll tell the story way better than I do. But, he, I mean, Bill Murray is Bill Murray. He's like mm-hmm. a mystery. <laughs> Yeah. To, to so to so many people, 
but you were wondering if he was even going to show up on day one of filming. Um, none of us knew, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's so, all. But everybody's there. Like the camera guys are there. Everybody's and... there. It's a miracle when he does show up. You, you, he's there. He's. <laughs> it, it's it's as if uh, a deity has come down from the clouds. <laughs> uh, now Billy's great. He would give you not only the the shirt, but he'd give you the skin off his back. I mean, yeah. he is. Uh, He's really uh, a, a great, great-hearted person. And uh, again, though, like Chevy, he doesn't suffer fools, the yeah. darker fools. You're going to be, you know, you'll be batted out of the way, you know, if uh, if he sees idiocy or medium talent there. Yeah, and when he shows up, he's ready to go. It's not like well, he's aloof and then just kind of like, oh, I'm here, now what? You know, he's he shows up ready for work. He brings his bags packed. He always does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was That was fun. Uh, Working so, with him always is. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, what some of the behind-the-scenes hijinks of, of SNL, like, do you have a favorite story? Because you hear a lot of different stories. Is there one in your mind that sticks out, like, uh, talking about, um, you know, maybe it's, like, one of the, the after parties or just things that are going on while everybody's sitting around writing? Well, sure, of course. You know, February, it gets quite cold in the northeastern United States. And uh, the windows at Rockefeller Center – Today, they open right up. There's no barriers or anything. Uh, you, the, mm-hmm. the windows open up, and they're, you know, you're ready to look. You can look down or, or do whatever. whatever you know, jump you like. if you so want, we, right? We used yeah. to set pizzas out to freeze at Franken and Davis's windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd, let, we'd, we'd leave them there. We'd make sure that they're... And then we would try to sail them out over and see if we could hit the rink. <laughs> <laughs> at Rockefeller like Center. Right? Yeah, nice. we see if That's we could so hit funny. the rink. And now, this is at <laughs> 4 in the morning when there's no one no around. Skate, right? Yeah. But still, that could have taken somebody's head off, a frozen yeah, yeah. pizza. Yeah. This is future <laughs> Senator Al Franken. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> who, Tom who, Davis. Who, who, by the way, should run again and should be reelected, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we try to get them just to talk uh, out of the 17th floor and hook down so that they'd skid across the ring. <laughs> and I think a couple, a couple of times uh, we were successful doing that. So yeah. that was one thing. Well, and that then, beats what Chris Farley's like a dump out one of those windows, I lo- right? right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we heard about that. What's that? The witch? Yeah, Chris, Chris Farley was dared or get, like to, uh, offered yeah. some, like some minimal amount of money that to take a dump out the window. Ah, yeah. So he hung his ass out there. <laughs> didn't yeah. even, except, that story I never heard. Yeah, accepted. <laughs> didn't really have to go. So he was really struggling. Got like a little nug out, and that was yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> even so, who, I forget. Oh, somebody was just telling that story. Um, I'll look it up. I think we did just David recently Spade heard just about have a book yeah. out or yeah, something. something. Something like pretty that. Funny. Well, yeah. I don't know. I have never heard that, but. Working in that building was spectacular. Uh, you know, it, 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 you, you had the, the beautiful, you know, friezes and, and uh, the, uh, the architecture of it and the sculpting and the, and the, 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 the depictions of industrial life in the, in the inside it and the, you know, the floor polisher was always going. No right. when, you, when I was there, there was a guy with a floor yeah. polisher there no matter when you went in. It could have been nine in the morning, nine at night, They're two obsessed. in the morning. There's yeah. a guy, you know, with the floor. Same guy, cigarette, ashes, yeah. floor. <laughs> and so Davis uh, and I, Tom Davis and I, uh, used to walk around the building and kind of look and go up and down in elevators and diff- different, you know, and, and, yeah. and kind of check it out. And I eventually I accumulated a lot of keys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> one of them to the 11th uh, floor rooftop garden you'd like go past oh, the secretary's nice. desk high yeah. and then step through a little half door and go there uh you know uh to, sort of keys to get through different hallways uh, so that you wouldn't have to go around and go the other and, and yeah. so i had a lot of keys so one day we're walking up on the 65th floor just looking at this endless hallway what the hell is this no offices up here there's oh there's a few what's this and then we see this black door on the left you know look at it and and go What's in here? We, yeah. let's, you know, so I go through keys. About the sixth key, I hit it. I hit it. Mm-hmm. Wow, this key opens this lock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I open the door like that, and I open it, and I step into nothing. It was a shaftway. Oh, oh, 65 oh, stories of shaftway. Oh, no. and, wow. I, and, and Davis realizes that I'm going forward. He grabs me and oh, pulls me back. Wow. Oh, we close that thing up. I put wow. those keys away. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Dang. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's insane. But it was fun, Man. fun working in that building. It's, uh, and then, it's a good thing that know. wasn't after one of those after parties. Yeah, yeah. that could have been. They a whole were great. Story. They were so so we had freaky. them. We had a yeah. we had a bar downtown, uh, mm-hmm. the Blues Bar, and uh, we would open up uh, after the after party, like at, you know, be- between like three and ten in the morning. And and often I would find myself at ten in the morning 
closing the arm oh my shutters. God. And between, <laughs> three, that's that's the, the, between three and ten is where wow. the party goes yeah, on. Exactly. Okay. I didn't yeah. keep my eyes open. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no, the eyes were open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had great bands go in there. ZZ Top yeah. and uh, Bowie played there. Oh, and, oh wow. And, yeah. uh, uh, Keith and... What a life, know, dude. Ethan mm-hmm. That is so cool. I so mean, cool. I mean, it's fun hearing about it. I can't imagine, like, you have these stories from a firsthand perspective to uh, to tell. That's right. true. It's you know, true. and also, like, I mean, these iconic movies, mm-hmm. Blues Brothers, Ghostbusters. Sure. I mean, my God, that was the first thing we were talking about it off the air a little bit. Like, one of the first movies that my son and I really uh, mutually mm-hmm. enjoy. Because, you know, you always try to tell your kids or introduce your kids to movies or shows or music that you loved and try to get them to love it the way that you did. And he really, he was a ghostbuster for Halloween. Right. Get, like, yeah, make he like was a little, way into Another it. one, oh, into for it. some reason, always comes up on this show, My Girl. <laughs> like, we yeah. always talk oh, yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, My Girl. That's, That's right. a nice, that was, those were nice little movies. Uh, yeah, Trading Places. I just like, saw you. Uh, a lady wrote that, My my Girl. That, yeah, My yeah. Girl. She I was, just, her, 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 go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. Just I, throwing I them out there. I was just re-watching Tammy and your Melissa McCarthy's dad and that. Like and everywhere Britney you Spears look, dad and Crossroads too. They, yeah, <laughs> why they want me for a father? I guess well, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty good. Yeah. That's had a resurgence as well. What Rolling a, but, Stone but, just uh, highlighted it. Yeah, one of my yeah. favorites, and I can watch it every time. Is Coneheads. You will be spared when my species overtakes your miserable gunner. <laughs> I don't, dude. I, I'm not a guy who gets high. But you, the way I laugh at that movie, you would think, you would think that I'm so yeah. high. I like, like it's, it's 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 the it's the the style of the language. It's English, but like it's the way that the words are put together. Yeah, it's like you know you know yelling at the daughter about you know like you know you already touched your cone. Like like, like dude, <laughs> uh, that's my favorite character of anyone that I've ever played anywhere. I, Is it? I, w- I would do him mm-hmm. again. Anytime. Movies, SNL, everything. 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 Really? He's he's huh. he's my guy. Huh. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm related. I mean, to you wrote that. I mean, so that's yeah. like uh, one of your children, right? I mean, uh, that's that's true. Yeah. yeah. Ian Davis, Davis, and I wrote that. Yeah. My girl uh, was written by a woman, and her uh, husband or her uh, father was a uh, funeral director. So she. Okay. Ah, and okay, uh, cool. you, we talked about, about winning and awards later uh, or, or earlier. So just cycling cy- cycling back to that, I, I'm I'm most proud of an award I received in association with with my girl and i tell you i've i've been nominated for an academy award i right. w- won an emmy with the snl writing crew um let's see i have the order of canada which is a vice regal decoration director decoration given to canadians and people from around the world who make canada a better place uh and uh of all of the awards that we have received mm-hmm. the one i'm most proud of uh that i have received uh is uh the uh the award from the California Undertakers Association <laughs> <laughs> for, for sympathetic yeah. sympathetic portrayal of a funeral director. Yeah. <laughs> so realistic portrayal, wow. and not I so have creepy award. murderer. That's so and fun. I love that award. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, indeed. They created no, it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Like what? So all these different roles, all these different people you play. Like what role do you think is most like your real personality? Oh, like the in your cone head. The cone head. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Alien, you know, withdrawn, yeah. cold. Okay. You're not withdrawn okay. and cold. Yeah. You are super empathetic. In fact, I, I hear you in different interviews or I've read different things. You are so sympathetic and empathetic. I think that's why so many people like you, too. Like, you're always looking out for... There was some story I heard about, like, the crew on SNL, and you were coming to their defense. You're one of the big stars. You're the big star of the show. Um, and, like, you're, you're coming to their defense because there was just, like, some... I, I, I can't remember the details well, of it, Well, there but... were two stories that, uh, you know, and I look back at my behavior in both those cases, and I, I, I regret being that heated and uh, out of control. But, but so many of the stars are, well, are dicks they... to the crew, or, you know, they, they don't give them the time of day, but you're the guy well, who's championing. What happened was the cue card crew was getting so stressed. That's SNL, what it was, yeah. Uh, that they were, they were getting changes a, a minute before we go on the air, and you or, or even seconds. And, you know, this... Talk about the pressure for them because they know the actors can't stand there without lines. The whole show is read on cue cards. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, uh, Lauren was in having a meeting and he hadn't come out. So I basically I kicked a hole in the wall in his <laughs> office, uh, between the dressing room and his office to get his attention. I was very mad about that. <laughs> That's a rabies that fixed, fan. That fixed That's right. That. Throwing stuff, kicking and, holes. Yeah. Walls. Kicking and, holes. And then right. at yeah. Paramount in the full cone, I went off on the guard at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> I went out there and I trashed the guard gate because they weren't letting my crew in after, oh. uh, after to park when we're shooting at night after seven o'clock, making them walk through Hollywood. I th- these work for Paramount. These people are hair. This is technical crew hair, makeup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want them to park, you know, and they just wouldn't listen. Wouldn't listen. Finally, I went. <laughs> 
full cone. <laughs> I want full cone on them. Oh my god! So I, I, those those I do regret. That's I funny. Don't, you know, well, I, mean, well, I don't I, see why I, you would regret. I, That's fun. I, I, I try yeah. to control my my temper, but I do have the Can French Canadian. You know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How surreal for the Mood. parking gate guy, though. To this day, yeah. he probably that's his, talks that's about that. That's his number that. one story. Yeah. 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 Dude, Dan Aykroyd oh, went yeah. full he cone. Yeah. 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 Full yeah. cone. Yeah. 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 Well, so. Dan Aykroyd's here. His, uh, his vodka, Crystal Head Vodka, is available at your local liquor store. You can't miss it. It's in a really cool it's skull beautiful. bottle. Different bottles well, depending on which one you're getting. Yeah. yeah. The reason I'm here like, uh, yeah. to, to do this on the vodka is because it's gift-giving time. Thanks. Mm. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we had Halloween. We have a spike in sales there oh yeah uh, I, I just want to tell people that it makes a great gift at christmas and thanksgiving made in canada with beautiful yeah. newfoundland water not mm -hmm. made in an, another place in the world that right. we uh, we, we're, we try to stay away from right now uh where a lot of vodka comes from <laughs> and uh you know um, Breaks people it's just fun it makes it makes a, a great gift and i'm really having fun with it yeah uh, it's all about relationships and uh you know i timed my my sort of basic exit out of you know, movies and that very well, considering what's going on today. Right. That, you know, you make a movie today, you don't get a TV, you don't get your network residual anymore. Oh, right, right. You don't right, get right. your cable yeah. anymore. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. get, you barely get your digital, you know. You, you, it's, so I feel for, for the actors uh, mm -hmm. that are out there because they, they need to get a piece. Yeah. Come on. Well, you know, and the AI, they want to scan you and use you forever. Right. right. You know, and some of these hit shows, are, there's billions of minutes that they're watched. So yeah. I yep. hope the actors get, you know, and if they can't get that, zero, 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 they need to get their own vodka minute. brand, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Dan Aykroyd yeah. is here. Yeah. Crystal Head Vodka. I mean, you, dude, you are quite the businessman. We'll talk about the Crystal Head Vodka here for a second. Find your local liquor store. Uh, it's in that skull bottle. They got some Crystal Head uh, ready to drink cocktails, right? Mm. That, uh, that are being released. Crystalheadvodka.com for more information about that. We were talking about that. High quality ingredients. Uh, free from the uh, the oils and the sugars and the additives and all that stuff. So, you are an ambassador for us. Right? Thank you very much. Well, yeah. I appreciate you being here, Rock man. So we, we study up a little bit to know what's going on. I, like on the on the business side thing, dude. Uh, so you started Hard Rock Cafe. I mean, not you solo, but you were the one who uh, House of Blues. House, House of Blues. Blues. But yes. wasn't the Hard Rock Cafe part? Like, that's his partner. That's correct. Isaac Tigrett founded Hard Rock oh, Cafe with, with yeah. Peter oh. Morton, and then and then Isaac came to Judy and I after John had died. Uh, I met Isaac uh, in London. Uh, actually, I, uh, the, we're, the weekend I married, uh, I'm married. <laughs> I was married to John. Uh. It's true. Uh, uh, <laughs> to Belushi. I, we were man and wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was the wife. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, the, when I, uh, the day I, I interred John, uh, then the next day I went to New York. I took the Concorde and uh, turned right over Martha's Vineyard, looked down from 47,000 feet. You could see the whole island. And there was my friend. Goodbye to one chapter in my life. Met at the airport by Isaac Tigrett because my friend Larry Bilzerian, who helped start House of Blues, he said, you know, you've lost a brother. Isaac lost two brothers. I think he can help you with this grief. So uh, we, I get off the, the plane in London, and there's Isaac in a Daimler stretch limousine with champagne and a joint about seven inches long. <laughs> and nice. off we go. And then from there, you know, we just were great friends. And he said, I think the Blues Brothers brand can be revived. And yeah. we, we started House of Blues. Wow. Uh, in the 90s, uh, late 90s, and then uh, Live Nation acquired it and folded it into their uh, organization in And we say acquired, it means you got a big fat check out of that. That's nice. <laughs> Mainly, uh, honestly, yeah. realistically, uh, it was, they bought it and we sold it uh, because we were challenged by so many things and we couldn't run the business without the resources of a major company. Yeah. And so in order to save 2,500 jobs, huh. we decided to to sell it and, 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 uh, and get a company in there that could really grow it and take it where, where yeah, well, it could it's, be. it's done very well. Yeah, they, they, yeah they're got cool. Venue, like House of Blues, Chicago, sure. super awesome mm -hmm. venue. I've seen a lot of shows. There. I missed the one yeah. in LA here. That was my office. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, uh, the about, vodka uh, company, but also the other cool thing I thought was pretty neat from a business standpoint, um, you were the guy who got the uh, distribution rights to Patron Tequila for the entire country of Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, that's how I got into this. I, 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 this, that's why I'm here today because mm -hmm. I, I didn't, you know, I, it's not like I had, you know, nothing Any interest to do. come on the Woody Show? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, 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 not that. <laughs> <laughs> not that. No, I'm, I'm. Ha this is my environment. I like this in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to stay. No, thank you. I'll, I'll Please set, do. I'll Kids. set up a cot under the. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, no, I, I just didn't. You know, I had. You know, I. Did, I'm here today because I didn't. Have, you know, have any 
desire to, to, to do, do anything, any, be any more busy or do anything else in life. Yeah, yeah. But I just wanted to get a better margarita at my dock in the summer. <laughs> yeah. And you could only buy two types of tequila in Canada then. I, and they were both inferior. And I thought, well, Patron, uh, I love Patron. I'll see if I can bring him to my little government-run liquor store in the village, maybe a case or two per summer. Yeah. And JP, my friend, JP DeJoy, he said, no, you have to bring it to the whole country, <laughs> made me the importing oh. agent, and we brought it in. I know That's that awesome. guy. His son went to the same boarding school I did. Oh, sure. He was the most generous oh, guy. Right. He's yeah. the guy, Paul Mitchell guy. So, right. like, yeah. like, dude, our whole boarding school got outfitted with all the Paul Mitchell stuff, but he was like, Lucky. he bought a really cool popcorn machine for everybody. He owned radio stations at the time. Uh, yeah. and so like I had this like uh, love affair with radio already. Mm-hmm. So he would like send me all this stuff from his stations that uh, that he owned and stuff. It was he, no, he's, he's a, a very guy. cool guy. Yeah, he, he, he's one of the great. Uh, I forgot he was under the, the yeah. radar entrepreneur. Yeah, um, and he eventually sold Patron uh, to Bacardi, and so we got out of it at that point. But yeah. uh, it, it sort of led me into no, what's man, this is a fun business. So what cool. what else is out there? Yeah. Well, tequila was sort of overdone at the time. And I couldn't start another tequila business after the So now it's vodka. But so I looked at vodka. And, Crystal uh, had vodka. And then smelt uh, the other vodkas mm-hmm. that were out there and said, why it's don't crap. I like them? Yep. And, okay. and, and made something that I can be proud of. Yeah, I think your words were earlier, hideous garbage, Ooh, right? Yeah. About all the other brands <laughs> out there. Gasoline. If I, if well, I that's what they put. A lot of, lot of manufacturers <laughs> put, put hideous garbage in it. Don't, I don't say who and I don't say, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but I know who. Right, right. I, I feel like uh, it, it would really be a crime if we didn't bring up ghosts while you were here. And I know we're running out of time, but when you have Dan Aykroyd. Yep. And, um, you know, because uh, the ghost thing, Greg has always told us about this ghost that used to uh, haunt yeah, it was the former His owner house. of the house that I bought named yes. Elmer who Elmer. died in the house, yeah. and that's why I got a good deal in the house, <laughs> and he stayed with me the entire time. Yeah, Lights because- on and off, handprints on couches, papers moved around, stuff that was inexplicable. See, he says Speakers this stuff to us. Speakers thrown across the room. He yeah. says this stuff to us, and, and we laugh. roll our eyes at him and they whatever, laugh. but like for, for you, this is family tradition, right? <laughs> I mean, like the, it's the, the whole, family business, and, the and family I, business. I tell you, I... I Absolutely, I'm ready to believe you, and I do believe you. Why would you say that? Uh, and it's but just you're crazy. It fits in well. <laughs> the, the, the unexplainable sometimes is, is, seems yeah, crazy, but it does. This is this this is a very similar story to what I hear and have read about all the time. Yeah. And you you were able to identify who it was. And, yeah, and, absolutely. And and and, uh, and uh, you know and and see things that they they did there was harmless more or less. But oh yeah. No, the uh, the the other side is very active, just as active as, as we are here in this mm. dimen- on these four dimensions, for yeah. sure. Um, did you try to eradicate it at all? Or? Not at all. It's I called the Ghostbusters? I borderline enjoyed it because yeah. I f- still thought of it as his house. Sometimes I would yell, like, Elmer, stop flickering the mm-hmm. lights, and they would stop flickering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a lot of stuff, and I know we're limited time, but so much stuff that was completely unexplained. Yeah, he my lo- brother. Lock me out if I would go outside, lock me oh, out. That prankster. happened to him, a bunch of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you hate that. that you hate that. Elmer my, uh, the prankster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Ghost prankster. My my brother uh, lived in a house on Selma Street over here in Hollywood. He owned it uh, for, for many years, and an opera singer uh, had died in the house, and she had owned it. And sometimes we'd all be there, and upstairs we would hear her going through the scales. Oh, wow. Up and down like that, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no. needs to stop us cold. No, like, for sure. Read Hans Holzer, H O L Z E R. Search him up on your search engine. Okay. And all his stories are there. Great ghost stories. Uh, and it's as real as uh, as, as what I'm what I'm touching as here. This bottle of crystal this head dusty vodka. table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it the gatekeeper, the key master, mm-hmm. Zool? Like who? Mm-hmm. Like who's in your house? Um, I don't. Well, I, I mean, have you ever had live, like a? Uh, yes, we we uh, we lived in a haunted house. Uh, in uh, on Woodrow Wilson Drive, it belonged to Mama Cass. Uh, oh wow! And uh, we were in there and uh, raised three da- daughters in that house. Um, and there was uh, also the spirit of a red-haired man with a little red-haired girl that my daughter saw. And uh, the story went that there was a party there in the '60s, and a guy died of a drug overdose, mm-hmm. and they buried him in the hillside next to the house. Oh. Oh. Just, wow! He was a drifter from Sunset Boulevard. Dun, he was dun, up there dun, partying, dun, yeah. and uh, so maybe that was him. But uh, things like, you know, jewelry, doing little dances, mm-hmm. and then you know, uh, a hand on the shoulder of the stairmaster going up and down. So. That house, yeah, and now the the owner who lives there now, she says that it's still happening occasionally. There's little stuff that goes on there, mm-hmm. uh, but nothing identifiable. And uh, I've never seen an apparition, although I I've talked to people who have. What about the one in the library? 
Ah, uh, well, her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's there. That was yeah. pretty crazy. You know what? You know. You know what's neat about Ghostbusters is that uh, you were saying your son is into it. Well, yeah. now uh, you've got three third generation. You've yeah. got grandchildren of. You've got grandparents bringing their grandchildren to to the movies and uh, and and showing them. You know, so it's. Uh, it's endured, certainly. And- one of my favorite moments of Ghostbusters is one that I don't know if anybody ever mentions. It's uh, when you guys are in the hotel trying to find Slimer, who ends up uh, sliming Bill Murray's character. And uh, come around the corner, it's the uh, the housekeeping lady, and you blow her up. And you go, yeah. what the <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. are you doing? <laughs> that made, to this day, I see that, and I laugh out loud every single time. <laughs> the delivery on that was uh Well, was what made it work was, you know, yeah. uh, the, the, the comedy layered onto... Uh, kind of the real <laughs> vernacular of, of paranormal research. What are you what thinking about, about, Ray? You know, yeah. um, stay puff marshmallow man. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about Blues Just Brothers popped in there. It was so subtle when you, the lighting of the cigarette with the car lighter and then throwing the car lighter out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I saw that as a yeah, kid, yeah. and I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Dan Aykroyd, thank you so much for uh, for coming in. Sure, appreciate thank you, you uh, thank being you. here. It's a it's an honor to have a guy. Yeah. Uh, like you here, and uh, we're all, as you can tell, big fans, and uh, appreciate you spending some time with us. And you know, good luck with Crystal Head Vodka, mm-hmm. CrystalHeadVodka.com. You can find it at your local liquor store, and uh, with the holiday season coming up, it's a uh, yeah, like you said, Great it's gift. it's a nice looking bottle. Yeah. In oh, yeah. fact, if Dan if Dan will autograph this, I've got my dad and my mom's uh, Christmas present ready to go. <laughs> 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 We're gonna share the bottle, two straws, you need a oh. sharpie. All right, <laughs> all right, yeah. Dan Aykroyd, everybody, Thanks, Dan. thank you, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> It is The Woody Show. We will be right back. I will sign it if you want. Oh, thank you, Dan. Yeah. Yeah.